So today I'm going to take a look at a markdown rendering program by the name of MDCAT. So in the past, I've taken a look at another program called Glow, which I am a big fan of. So the reason why this one's different is because it'll also render images. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for MDCAT. So as you can see in here, it will actually render images properly, but the reason why I'm not the biggest fan of this is because it also sacrifices the proper rendering for things like headings and things like that. I prefer the way that Glow does it where it will either highlight it or bold them. I don't really like just, I don't know if you can see it too well. This just kind of adds some dashes before it. Yeah, it gets the point across, but if I could have Glow's better markdown rendering for things like headings and stuff like that, and then also have this for images, that would be absolutely awesome. I guess you could probably write some sort of hacky script that'll parse half the file in one way, parse half the file in the other way, but I'm too lazy to do that. I'm just gonna stick with Glow because I don't really use images. Plus ST has a lot of trouble actually rendering images. So when I'm testing this, I'm gonna be using Kitty instead. Here's what it can actually do. So it'll nicely render all basic common mark syntax. So it won't do tables and footnotes. That's not a big deal. Tables might be a little annoying. I don't know anyone who uses footnotes in Markdown. If you're one of those people, let me know, I guess. So it'll also highlight code blocks with Syntec, which seems to be a Rust syntax highlighting language using sublime text definitions. That's probably fine. I don't have a problem with it. I tested it off camera and it works fine. I ex wouldn't expect anything different. So this I didn't realize beforehand, but when it shows links, the links are actually clickable. So if we look up here, there's a little bit of a underline here. So that represents that that link is actually clickable, which is really cool. Like, honestly, that's just really cool to have there. And also, it'll have inline images, as you can see right here. So these are the terminals and, like, the features that you need supported. So I'm just going to be using Kitty because I just have that installed and I know that it works. Not on a Mac, so I'm not going to use iTerm2. I don't know what terminology is. Is that another Mac terminal? I don't even know. I've never heard of that one. Anyway, we're just going to be using Kitty for it. So if you want to install MDCAT, it's available in a couple of different ways. So you can get it with Homebrew if you're on a Mac. You can get it on Arch Linux in the AUR. And if you're on Void Linux, then you can get it with XBS install. So if you are on any other system, you're going to have to compile it by yourself using this right here. So you can just install it via Rust up with cargo install MDCAT. That's not too difficult. It's literally just this line here. And then if you need to update it, you can just use this line here. So yeah, that's fine. Now it also apparently supports SVGs, but I haven't actually managed to get them to work. So I've installed this package. Like I can show you that I have RSVG convert installed right here. I have that installed, but it doesn't seem to work. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just something with the AUR package, with Arch, with Kitty, I don't know what it is. For some reason though, SVGs don't seem to work, but that's not a big deal. If you can get them to work, then that's cool. It says they're supposed to be supported in Kitty, but I don't know what problem I'm actually having. So let's just open it up in ST and then I can show you what it looks like when you actually have the images rendering. So what if I got my, yeah, I forgot what, I changed my zoom key and I forgot what I had it bound to. So I actually downloaded the examples they've got on the GitHub, so we can just use those. I think they're in the samples folder. Yeah, okay. So this is the help page for MDCAP before we go into anything else. So if you want to disable the color and all of the styling because you just want a basic cat output, then you can do that. I don't know why you would do that instead of just using cat in that case, but that's an option, I guess. So maybe it'll still do the, the dash rendering. Actually, we'll try that in just a sec. I don't know what it does if you just disable colors and styling. I think it might still do the, the dots and dashes. So you can change the max number of columns to use for output. So if you want to fold the output, then you can do it through that. Obviously, there's also GNU utils to do that. And there are other methods that you can fold text with, but it's nice to have that built into the program. So if you've never done Markdown before, the way you actually insert an image is you have to put a link to it. So if you don't want to download those images, 
So then you can use dash L and that won't load remote resources. And then the rest of this stuff, not too important. Oh, you also have the option of reading from standard in instead of reading from a file name, if that's what you want to do. To do that, you just write mdcat dash, and then we can go like this and uh, like that. And I, how do we end that now? I don't actually know how to end this. Yeah, okay. Well, there's some way to end that. I don't... <laughs> I should have checked what the way to end that is. Someone's going to tell me in the comments that I'm an idiot for not knowing how to end that. But that's not too important. You're probably never going to be using it anyway. So let's have a render of one of these files. So I think, what do we have in here? So we have this common mark and showcase. So I think showcase was the one that they had showing on the GitHub page. So we can run that one first. So we run that, and as we can see, if we don't have image support, what it's going to do is the same thing that something like Glow is going to do. I think Glow does the same thing actually, where it will just say the path to the actual image. Let's try that with Glow and let's see what the difference is. So yeah, it'll just show a, it'll show a slightly different path, but it'll still show a path to the image. So this is the rendering for MDCAT right here. This is the rendering for Glow. Personally, I prefer Glow, especially because ST doesn't support image renders, but it's gonna be up to you how you feel about that. So let's also try the other one. So we go uh, MD cat and then, what was the other one, common mark. So we render this one as well. And this will show basically everything that is available to do. So there's a lot in here. Where, where do we start? Here, yeah. Okay, so this will show you how highlighting works for every single thing that's available, how slashes work, how headers work. So I'm not gonna go through all of this individually, but this will give you an example of how everything works. As you can see, it doesn't actually render images even if you've got them downloaded or if you're pulling them from a website within ST. I'll show you Kitty in just a moment, but within ST and most other terminals, you're not gonna have image rendering working. With the headers, it uses these like dashes, which I'm not a big fan of. As you saw with the way that Glow does it, that's my preferred method, but it's gonna be entirely up to you. This is a very aesthetic choice. It does lists the way you'd expect, quotes fairly how you would expect, it indents them and changes their color. Nothing too special there. It also has the option of using to-dos and you can tick to-dos, which is actually really nice. I don't know if Glow does that or not. I haven't tried it. I'll try Glow in just a moment. We have more block quotes, codes, nothing, nothing else too special here. And by the looks of what it's saying here, it's supposed to be actually rendering this, but I guess it's not for whatever reason. Maybe that's an ST problem. Because if we load it up within Glow, it actually does render it properly. Either that or it just strips the tags out. I think it's rendering it though, maybe. No, it do it's not rendering the uh, inline tags at least. So it might just be stripping them out. I'm not sure. I haven't actually played around with HTML embedded into Markdown. You maybe have tried that before, but I haven't. So. So to-dos actually are rendered properly within Glow, and I think they're rendered a bit better than they are within MDCAT. So obviously this will be entirely up to you, but let's actually go into a terminal that does support these features. So this is Kitty right here. As you can see, it looks almost identical, and that's entirely on purpose because I like this theme. Anyway, let's see. Oh God, it makes noise. I forgot it makes noise. Um, this is why part of the reason I don't like this terminal because I am too lazy to actually fix that. I'll, I'll get to it at some point. I don't use this terminal much. Mainly it's here just in case I uninstall ST accidentally and I need a terminal. Anyway, let's just try our MDCAT now with the showcase. So if we look in here now, we can see that it actually renders the inline images. So I kind of, oh, I can't click on the links. So we have this link down the bottom right here. And as you can see, my cursor actually changes. So I should be able to click on that and it should Technically, maybe, do I have to right click? Okay, it's not actually loading up. It looks like I can click on it, but do I have to control click or something? I don't know, maybe it just doesn't work within Kitty for some reason. It looks like I can click on it. You can see that I should be able to click on it, but I can't seem to work out how to. That's a problem. But we do have this image rendering in here, so that's also nice. So let's just go over to MDCAT with the other file then. Oh God, I hate that this makes noise. I really should have just disabled that. Actually, I might just, you know what? So it turns out I had my mic muted for this section, so I'm gonna have to go back and re-record it. So let's have a look at MDCAT for the 
uh, full file so we can actually see everything that renders within Kitty. So most of this stuff is the same. As you noticed, it took a little bit longer to actually load than it did with ST, but that's because it actually has to like load in images, whereas ST it didn't have that problem. So most of this stuff is still exactly the same. The links, I still have no idea how they function. If someone knows, let me know in the comment section down below and I will maybe pin it. I'll probably pin it so you can just tell me how dumb I am. Anyway, so most of this stuff is exactly the same. Nothing too special here. But the thing we are most interested in is this right here. So as we can see, we are loading in images that are stored within our file system. So this one is in the current folder slash rust or something. I don't remember what it's actually called. This one here is supposed to be loading in an SVG. But as I mentioned, I can't get SVGs to load for whatever reason, even though I have the program that it requires to actually render them. For some reason, they're not rendering. So if someone knows why that's happening, let me know and I will, I don't know. I, I already said I'll pin the other comment. Let me know and I'll respond to it. So we're also loading in an image from a remote location. So obviously if that server was down, we wouldn't better load that image. But this actually shows that if the server's up, then we can pull an image that's not on our system. So most of this other stuff is exactly the same. I don't think there are any changes, but we have this HTML down here. So I guess Glow must actually be stripping out the tags. And I think maybe this is supposed to be rendering it. This isn't clear whether this is supposed to be rendering it or if it's supposed to just be highlighting it. Judging by the fact that this is all green, I think it's supposed to be highlighting it. I don't know. I, I don't ever embed HTML tags within my markdown. So yeah, I kind of prefer just stripping out the tags, especially if you're not gonna render them properly. I don't know, I'm not sure how this is supposed to be rendering. This isn't clear from this example given. Anyway, let's have a look at what it looks like when you try some of these other options. So if we use the dash C option, that'll actually disable the color. So if we go MDCAT dash C, then showcase. So what we can see here, so it doesn't actually load the images in this time, but it is still doing the same thing with the headings where it's using uh, dashes to represent what level of heading it is. As I've said before, I'm not a big fan of this sort of styling. You might be, but hey, that's up to you. So I was thinking about what reason you'd want to actually use this. So the only thing I can think of is if you want to actually use this and then pass it into a program so you can do some other parsing on it. And stripping out the color characters is just going to make it easier to pass because you don't want to deal with like ANSI characters when you're trying to parse text. So if we try that on the bigger file now, so on the common mark file, as we can see, it's doing the same thing with the HTML, nothing special there. The to-dos and ev everything's still being rendered properly except for the images. So this will just disable the image rendering and also disable your theme, which is nice. As I said, it's nice if you want to parse it within some sort of other program. So what other options were there? Was there anything special we should care about? So no, not really. We can just change the column width and or the, the number of columns and also not load in remote resources. So if we just try that one, so if we go dash L with common mark, the only image it won't load, or obviously except for the SVG as well, because I can't get them to work, it won't load in anything that has to pull in from a remote server. Someone let me know how you actually click on these links. I have literally no idea, and I didn't bother to check it because I thought it would just work by clicking on them, as you would expect them to. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for MDCAT. I don't think there's anything else in the GitHub page, no. Oh, I guess terminology will actually render SVGs directly with no additional tools. That's nice to have, I guess. So yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything too special. I'm not gonna really go into what common mark is because Markdown, I'll show you like briefly what this website looks like, but Markdown isn't really a, what's the word, a standard? It's a collection of standards. So I'll leave this link down in the description down below if you wanna actually have a look into what common mark exactly is. All the markdown sort of syntaxes are fairly similar, but there are some like slight changes and each of them have their own sort of extensions. Like some have tables, some have footnotes, some don't have tables, some don't have footnotes, some will include code, code parsing and other things like that. And as I said, they're all like a part of this markdown sort of sphere, like GitHub has its own sort of markdown, then there's common mark, then there's these other sorts of markdown styles, like Pandoc has a markdown style as well. They're all considered markdown, but they're all slightly different, which is the annoying thing about markdown, but it, 
it also makes it a really powerful sort of standard to work with. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you liked this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Down below, I have got all of my social links. I'm not going to go through all of them anymore because I have way too many of them. So if you'd like to support the channel, go check that out. I've got like five or six different ways you can support. Obviously, you don't have to if you don't want to because all the videos will remain available for free. Now, up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything for me. So, I'm out.